Welcome to Switzerland. Did you know that our country is not just a great place to visit, but also your first class business location? We are centrally located in Europe and we have the world's best infrastructure. Oh, and the train is always on time, so let's take a journey. Did you know that Switzerland has four official languages? Ja? No? Forse? Bete dia? Don't worry, we also have excellent English skills. However, we don't spend all day chatting, we love to work. In 2012, we could have voted for longer holidays and we voted against them. It's crazy, isn't it? But we're not crazy. Our economy and government are among the world's most stable. That, combined with our outstanding talent pool and a deregulated labor market, makes Switzerland the most innovative and competitive nation in the world. Our Swiss dual education system provides an excellent mix of both vocational education and apprenticeships. Now let's take a look at industry. Maybe Germany, the United States and China are well known for their industrial output. But did you know that Swiss industrial production per capita beats all of them? Sorry guys. Our country is small, but hey, three Swiss companies are among the global top 20 most valuable companies. Furthermore, we offer the best quality of life. That's why three Swiss cities are among the world's best for the highest quality of living. In addition, Switzerland is one of the happiest nations on the globe. Perhaps because we eat on average 12 kilograms of chocolate per year? Switzerland is the best location for innovation has stable political, economic, and financial conditions, has the highest living standard, and welcomes your business. So tell us now, when will you invest in Switzerland? Switzerland Global Enterprise, enabling new business. Find out more at s-ge.com.
For us in the Aditya Birla Group, Odisha has been one of our most preferred investment destinations. Chief Minister Sri Naveen Patnaik's exceptional leadership has been the singular factor in the rapid progress of Odisha. The state government has leveraged its competitive advantages, including its progressive policies and governance framework are a big pull factor. Welcome you to Orissa. Come join the Juggernaut.
In healthcare, a vast ecosystem is helping therapy innovators become more patient-centric and more effective than ever before. Cytiva supports researchers, biopharma, and clinicians in the pursuit of more targeted treatments. In discovery, speed and accuracy are everything. The faster and smarter researchers can work, the more patients benefit. To ensure that new, more targeted therapies become reality, we're equipping biomanufacturers with the tools and expertise they need to produce cost-effectively and quickly. How can tens of thousands of individualized patient doses be manufactured quickly, efficiently, and securely? The answer, with a healthy dose of expertise and innovation. We're creating processes and solutions that are scalable and address complex needs. We work to deliver diagnostic tools and other technologies to bring the right therapy to the right patient at the right time so that life-saving medicines come within the reach of more people and could save more lives. Cell culture, protein purification, biomarker imaging and analysis. It may not be what most think about when envisioning the future of healthcare, but this is what we do. Our part in changing the world, advancing and accelerating. Discovery, manufacturing, diagnostics, future therapeutics.
to regulatory compliance is long and filled with choices. With a combination of standards, process, and service, USP can help guide your path to compliant, quality products. Trust the standard that sets the benchmark for medicines. Our robust and collaborative scientific process is part of our comprehensive approach. We offer reference standards that are tied to USP monographs to help you minimize risk and enhance your confidence and compliance, reduce time and resources spent developing in-house standards, and streamline your path to regulatory compliance. We work with independent volunteer scientific experts who rigorously review and approve our standards, which undergo testing by USP and other laboratories around the world. Ongoing testing of our standards helps ensure the quality of your product over time, and only USP reference standards are linked to official USP NF monographs that provide specifications for the identity, purity, and potency to meet FDA requirements without further in-house qualification and the needs of our global customers. With USP, you have access to our in-house scientific experts to guide you every step of the way. In addition to our best-in-class USP reference standards, we offer training, education, and other services. Our online resources help smooth your path to regulatory compliance. Our standards provide precise testing and validation guidelines, as well as reference samples for testing. Drugs can be made consistently every time. We are more than reference standards. We provide a unique combination of standards, process, and service. From buying to applying standards, we support your bottom line with reference standards that have been rated best in class by our customers. Talk with us to find out how we can help you navigate your journey to regulatory compliance. Contact USP at USP.org. Welcome to Switzerland. Did you know that our country is not just a great place to visit, but also your first-class business location? We are centrally located in Europe, and we have the world's best infrastructure. Oh, and the train is always on time, so let's take a journey. Did you know that Switzerland has four official languages? Ja? No? Forse? Veci dia? Don't worry, we also have excellent English skills. However, we don't spend all day chatting. We love to work. In 2012, we could have voted for longer holidays, and we voted against them. It's crazy, isn't it? But we're not crazy. Our economy and government are among the world's most stable. That, combined with our outstanding talent pool and a deregulated labor market, makes Switzerland the most innovative and competitive nation in the world. Our Swiss dual education system provides an excellent mix of both vocational education and apprenticeships. Now let's take a look at industry. Maybe Germany, the United States, and China are well known for their industrial output. But did you know that Swiss industrial production per capita beats all of them? Sorry, guys. Our country is small. But hey, three Swiss companies are among the global top 20 most valuable companies. Furthermore, we offer the best quality of life. That's why three Swiss cities are among the world's best for the highest quality of living. In addition, Switzerland is one of the happiest nations on the globe. Perhaps because we eat on average 12 kilograms of chocolate per year? 
Switzerland is the best location for innovation, has stable political, economic and financial conditions, has the highest living standard and welcomes your business. So tell us now, when will you invest in Switzerland? Switzerland Global Enterprise, enabling new business. Find out more at s-ge.com.
for us in the Aditya Birla group, Odisha has been one of our most preferred investment destinations. Chief Minister Shri Naveen Patnaik's exceptional leadership has been the singular factor in the rapid progress of Odisha. The state government has leveraged its competitive advantages, including its progressive policies and governance framework are a big pull factor. In healthcare, a vast ecosystem is helping therapy innovators become more patient-centric and more effective than ever before. Cytiva supports researchers, biopharma, and clinicians in the pursuit of more targeted treatments. 
In discovery, speed and accuracy are everything. The faster and smarter researchers can work, the more patients benefit. To ensure that new, more targeted therapies become reality, we're equipping biomanufacturers with the tools and expertise they need to produce cost-effectively and quickly. How can tens of thousands of individualized patient doses be manufactured quickly, efficiently, and securely? The answer, with a healthy dose of expertise and innovation. We're creating processes and solutions that are scalable and address complex needs. We work to deliver diagnostic tools and other technologies to bring the right therapy to the right patient at the right time so that life-saving medicines come within the reach of more people and could save more lives. Cell culture, protein purification, biomarker imaging and analysis. It may not be what most think about when envisioning the future of healthcare, but this is what we do. Our part in changing the world. Advancing and accelerating. Discovery, manufacturing, diagnostics, future therapeutics. to regulatory compliance is long and filled with choices. With a combination of standards, process, and service, USP can help guide your path to compliant, quality products. 
Trust the standard that sets the benchmark for medicines. Our robust and collaborative scientific process is part of our comprehensive approach. We offer reference standards that are tied to USP monographs to help you minimize risk and enhance your confidence and compliance, reduce time and resources spent developing in-house standards, and streamline your path to regulatory compliance. We work with independent volunteer scientific experts who rigorously review and approve our standards, which undergo testing by USP and other laboratories around the world. Ongoing testing of our standards helps ensure the quality of your product over time, and only USP reference standards are linked to official USP NF monographs that provide specifications for the identity, purity, and potency to meet FDA requirements without further in-house qualification and the need of our global customers. With USP, you have access to our in-house scientific experts to guide you every step of the way. In addition to our best-in-class USP reference standards, we offer training, education, and other services. Our online resources help smooth your path to regulatory compliance. Our standards provide precise testing and validation guidelines, as well as reference samples for testing. Drugs can be made consistently every time. We are more than reference standards. We provide a unique combination of standards, process, and service. From buying to applying standards, we support your bottom line with reference standards that have been rated best in class by our customers. Talk with us to find out how we can help you navigate your journey to regulatory compliance. Contact USP at USP.org.
ladies and gentlemen namaskar very warm greetings on day 2 of the global bike india 2021 it is my absolute privilege to open the startup conference this afternoon it is structured into three sessions the first is on the innovation focus initiatives startup showcase which will elucidate our facilitation efforts in biotech sector the second session on country focus for ecosystem connect and the third session thereafter would be the state focus biotech cluster as we begin with the first session it is my absolute pleasure to invite dr manish tiwan head strategic and entrepreneurship development at byrac for his welcome address over to you sir uh, thank you very much uh, minister sir uh, very warm welcome to you and uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, dr saru and the dignitaries the very fact that this startup conclave has been positioned in the in the in this global bio india is a recognition that the startup ecosystem is growing in the country this is also a recognition of this important stakeholder component in the biotech ecosystem if i may say it is the centerpiece of india's growing innovation uh, ecosystem story india is known as a country of startups we have more than 90000 startups in the country for the biotech we been growing these numbers in 2015 we had about 1022 startups by 2021 we have crossed 4000 and going forward in 2025 we would be touching close to 10000 we will get to see an essence of some uh, examples from this growing ecosystem in the product launch today the driver for the medium scale companies and the large scale companies this is the ecosystem which provides the innovation growth sector growth uh, growth and energy to the sector we have layered up biotech sector now with 59 incubation centers supported through byrac dbt alone and these numbers would again increase 225 going forward we are layering up with capacity building and common infrastructure called technology clusters to further boost this sector the bio economy of the country uh, here we have stated uh, stated a target of 150 billion Uh, by 2025 in this section we will also be looking at how india's bio economy doing currently and how is it pacing up towards 2025 we will be rolling out the india bio economy report 2021 uh, shortly in 2015 we had 200 and about 35 billion as our bio economy in 2019 we reached to two times which is 62 billion and last year was covid uh, covid year we will get to see how did we do in this covid year too the another important section in this uh, particular session when you are here we will be also touching and releasing an assessment of biotech investment potential across different states so at the state level we'll get to see how the biotech ecosystem is being is been projecting an important section that uh, which is a recognition of government of india's priority that is the project development cell we would also be honored to have it announced uh, formally by in your presence that reflects public private engagement through dbt byrac dpi invest india coming together and promoting investment ready projects for the country attracting both national as well as international companies so i'll stop here sir and uh, thank you very much for joining and gracing this startup conclave thank you over to you afsa thank you so much sir for those very enlightening words and now we really know what to look forward to from this session ahead I would now invite Dr. Suresh Narayanan, the Chief Operating Officer, Association of Biotechnology-Led Entrepreneurs Enterprises, a presentation on the bioeconomy updates. To you, sir, and I am sure that you are going to share your screen for the slides, please.
thank you, Dr. Renu Sarup uh, and uh, Minister Mr. Piyush Goyal for giving us the opportunity. This is an annual report done by Bayrak and Abel for the last uh, several years, just to keep track of the uh, bioeconomy bio uh, growth. So the, this is the uh, this this is the next report which will be uh, releasing uh, re by the minister uh, in a few minutes from now. So uh, we are happy to report that uh, you know while the national economy took a seven eight eight percent uh, dip. Uh, Biotechnology or the bioeconomy sector has grown by 13, 12.3% uh, last year to touch 70.2 uh, billion. Uh, from the time uh, the last five years, as Dr. Manish also pointed out, it's been a steady upward growth uh, from 35 billion from 2015. It's now exactly doubled to $70 billion uh, at the end of that December. These are the numbers for the calendar years. Uh, as expected, as it was pointed out yesterday, also inaugural biopharma sector, which also includes the medical technology sector, is uh, almost two thirds of the sector, accounting for 62 percent. BT cotton and the bio agri sector is another 10 percent, uh, and rest of it makes up the 70 billion in the last year. And see, bio agri is the only sector which showed a negative because uh, uh, you know the cotton uh, growth is almost. Uh, you know, acreage is 94 percent with BT cotton, so the scope is not much unless the new products come in, for which also the government has given permission for the BT brinjal field trials last year. So, uh, we looked at because of COVID year 2020 was COVID year. We looked at the COVID economy and uh, COVID uh, actually given a seven billion bump to the bio economy last year. Just the RT PCR tests alone, we India did. 165 million tests last year, and uh, that itself was added close to $4 billion to the bioeconomy last year. And from the data, we indicate the uh, Commerce Minister will be happy to know that the imports, uh, medical sector is primarily import dependent, and the imports actually fell by 1.5% last year, and uh, so, uh, with the domestic manufacturers stepping into uh, fulfill the demands. So uh, another part of the, uh, uh, this report, we have been looking at the startup formation and uh, we look at the ROC data for registration. On an average, some 15,000 companies are registered every month in the country. And uh, biotech uh, companies continue to register in the startup category. And there are almost average uh, um, 70 companies are registered from there was 840 companies are registered in biotech sector last year. So taking the total to 4,000. 237 biotech startups are there in the country. Fairly uniform, except for a slight dip in uh, April, almost every month uh, with an averaging, uh, you know, 70. But uh, October was 117 biotech startups. Uh, uh, this is a location map, and primarily, uh, you know, Maharashtra with two ROC. With, since we take data from ROC, the Maharashtra, Pune, and Bombay ROC, Mumbai ROC continue to show the largest number, followed by Karnataka. And UP is also catching up with the registrations at Kanpur and uh, Lucknow. We also looked at the uh, uh, you know for promoters, and we are very happy to report that almost 40% uh, of the promoters of this 4,237 startups are women. You know when we did the Early analysis a couple of years ago, it was 33 percent. Now it is 40 percent. Uh, we estimate that these startup biotech startups are employing more than one lakh uh, uh, people, and most of the startups have an average of six to ten people once they start operation, just within a few months after the generation. With that, uh, uh, over to you, and uh, we are we are looking forward to the minister releasing the report in a few minutes. From now. Thank you, Neha. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Suresh. Uh, it is now my absolute privilege to introduce to you to an initiative called the Project Development Cell, PDC. The PDC for the biotechnology sector is being established at the Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, BIRAC, by the Department of Biotechnology in association with Invest India, the National Invest Promotion and Facilitation Agency. 
The PDC would be anchored to the Make in India cell of BIRAC to facilitate investments in the biotechnology sector by providing a dedicated facilitation mechanism. The cell would closely interact with potential investors and state governments to identify suitable clusters, geographic locations for fast tracking investments and project implementation. We will now have a short video on the PDC, please. Can we have the video, please? The Indian biotechnology sector is poised to grow exponentially over the next decade into a world-class biotechnology hub. As India cements its position as the world's pharmacy, it is also working on fulfilling its technological and innovation capabilities in the sector. This potential is being propelled by the Government of India through policy initiatives such as Make in India to further strengthen the ecosystem a project development cell, PDC, has been set up by the Department of Biotechnology in collaboration with Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council and Invest India. The PDC would also foster and nurture new partnerships to enable sustainable investments in the sector. I would now invite Dr. Renu Suru, Secretary, Department of Biotechnology, to say a few words about the biotech, biotech startup ecosystem and formally announce the project development cell. Over to you, ma'am. A very good afternoon to the Honorable Minister. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us here today. And this, I thank you on behalf of the entire biotech community who has joined us today on this Global Bio India platform. Sir, your presence in the Global Bio India first session that we did in 2019 really energized our young startups and motivated them to do much more than what they were already doing. This year, sir, it gives me great pleasure to let you know that last time you saw physically when we met in the Delhi Aero City grounds, we had, we had informed you we had over 3,000 uh, participants from about 30 countries. This time we have nearly over 6,000 delegates joining in virtually from 50 countries. And what is more important is there has been an active participation, not just in the exhibition, the round tables, the investor forums. We have 24 sessions uh, planned out in this Global Bio India. And we also have their participation in terms of the startups, the engagements that they're doing with various groups. If it was a physical event, sir, you would have seen the vibrancy and the energy levels, but I'm sure you can feel that even in this virtual platform that we are connecting with. Sir, it also gives me immense pleasure, which you know that the last year has been the year of the pandemic. It's been a year of challenge, but it was, clearly a year of opportunities for the science and technology field to deliver. And this robust ecosystem, which had been set up over the last few years through these key policy enablers, through the key strategies through which we had established it, was challenged to come forward with their response, with their solutions. And they did stand up to this challenge, sir. You're aware of it. We have, within record time, within less than one year, brought out vaccines which have been authorized under the emergency use authorization. The diagnostics have been a key success story for us. In less than three months, we moved from 100% import to 100% self-reliance. And today, sir, as you know, we are, we are ready to export them. Our PPs, our um, NN95s, all of them. The startups really came forward. The industry came forward. And so what we had been working on for so many years to blur the boundaries between the academia, the industry, the startups, I think we got to see that. This has been a success because of the convergence, the collaboration, and more importantly, the commitment that all our scientific research groups showed. Uh, so you did see the numbers of the bioeconomy growth, which were just presented to you. And we will request you, sir, straight after this to kindly release that report of the bioeconomy 2020. 
it's very heartening to see sir that despite all the challenges we did have this growth and as suresh said 840 new startups in the last year it's not just because of the covid sir it's because they did see an opportunity into the sector to come forward and also at this point sir our focus has been as we had mentioned and you had also encouraged this group to look at initially sir when the 2016 action plan for the startup india was announced uh, you will recall that the honorable minister prime minister had given us very specific targets for the biotech sector we had said by 2020 we'll have 2000 startups very pleased to inform you sir we are more than double of that 4300 is the number which suresh just informed you for 2020 we also in addition to looking at the scalability because for us the key issue was how do we seed the startups how do we scale them now our focus is sir scalability to sustainability how do we sustain them and we have been able to launch a number of these seed funds fund of funds and i'm also pleased to inform you that we've been working very closely with dpit sir in fact secretary dpit and me both of us we chaired the investor panel yesterday and uh, dbt byrac are working on that seed fund which was just announced by the honorable prime minister and um, guru prashad mahapatra has promised me that there's going to be a vertical for biotech in that seed fund that you have kindly launched i hope we'll be able to take it forward just some statistics on that sir when we evaluated it uh, we have a very small seed fund for biotech right now it's less than 500 crores but 750 startups that we evaluated sir today their valuation is more than 3500 crores so these are just very small numbers which we hope will pick up the startup india the make in india these key initiatives sir you can see them visible in this biotech sector as we are moving ahead but we are also now moving forward to see how we can establish this as a growth chain not for incremental growth but for exponential growth i'm very pleased at this point to also inform you sir that you had taken that leadership you had from the cabinet got cleared the whole project development cell initiative there is empowered group which is chaired by the cabinet secretary the biotechnology sector was identified as one of those and we have worked to see that that gets established today we are very pleased to report back to you sir as per your directions the biotechnology sector formally has now established its product development cell and this project development cell straight after this inaugural session will be discussing with states and we have about eight states who have been lined up for the state focus and international investors i hope very soon you'll start seeing the results of this project development cell our partnership with the invest india is key for this and we will look forward to working with them to take it ahead moving forward sir i'll also like to inform you that uh, we did uh, yesterday our honorable minister dr harshvardhan ji and the honorable finance minister released our biotech strategy for the next 5 years we have the target of 150 billion dollar bio economy we've targeted 10000 startups we've targeted about 125 incubation centers bringing in tier 2 and tier 3 cities but most importantly sir there are two issues that we are focusing on and that is how do we connect the knowledge ecosystem to the translational ecosystem so we are looking at setting up these knowledge translational clusters which sir will actually resonate very well with the announcement which the honorable finance minister made this year of the nine city clusters so urjit clusters as we call them the university research joint industry clusters translational clusters will be working to do a seamless flow of knowledge translation and we are also setting up on the uk catapult models our own indian model of what we call technology propellers because we are now including within it test beds and also small prototyping facilities which can help startups to set up their own small manufacturing to be able to then move from startup india to make in india with this sir i will just like to conclude by saying that uh, covid gave us a good learning the vaccine and diagnostics which i mentioned to you the covid suraksha mission atmanirbhar bharat special grant that we got for the covid vaccines we hope sir that this learning is now going to take 
uh, take us forward in other sectors, agricultural sector, industrial sector. The startups have been motivated. Even in these COVID times, we had nearly 150 uh, solutions coming from startups for different COVID activities. We look forward to having your continued support with us to see how we can take this sector forward. We also look forward to your continued support, sir, for helping us to make this uh, scalable ecosystem of biotech sustainable. And we also look forward to taking India to fulfill the ambition of what our clarion call given by our Honorable Prime Minister of Anatmanirbhar Bharat so that we can make not just for India, but also for the globe. So thank you very much, sir, for your kind presence. And I know it's going to be so motivating those large numbers of thousands of startups who are today hearing us live as we go forward. So thank you so much, sir. And over to you, Hafsa, to take us forward with this. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. With your permission, Honorable Minister, sir, and Renu, ma'am, we can now have the PDC launch slide, please. Absolutely. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so moving forward, we now have releases of two reports. Uh, the Indian Bioeconomy Report 2021 by ABLE. The Indian Bioeconomy Report 2021 is the third edition of the Bioeconomy Report brought out by the Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council through its Make in India facilitation cell and the Association of Biotechnology-led Enterprises, ABLE. The IBER 2021 maps the Indian bioeconomy status, FDI inflow, number of biotech startups companies in India, bioeconomy's contribution to the GDP, contribution of various subsectors and policies that could trigger India's bioeconomy. With your permission, sir, uh, we will now have the release of this report. So can we request you for the kind release of this, sir, if you permit, we will put it onto the screen, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The second report that we are raising today is the Biotech Investment Potential for Indian States report by IFC. The report entitled Realizing Investment Potential for Indian States, Specific Biotech Industries by the Institute for Competitiveness analyzes the investment potential that lies within the state-specific biotechnology sector. By establishing a framework and through thorough analysis of the state-level bioclusters, this report would highlight the strengths and weaknesses of the states for prospective investors in biotechnology sector. Again, I request your permission, Honorable Minister Shri to release this book. Thank you, sir. We now have the slides. Thank you, ma'am. Namaskar, sir. How are you doing? So, moving ahead, we now have the product launches. I would request the permission of the Honorable Minister Shri Priyush Koyalji to uh, allow us permission to make these announcements. There are five of these product launches. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, I just Please go ahead. Through. Thank you, sir. So the first product launch that we have today is Embolio, which is an innovation from the Blackrock Technologies Limited. It is a portable battery-powered refrigeration device that can strictly maintain any freezing temperature for over 12 hours for the last mile from school to Paris. Can we please request the video, please? Presenting Blackrock Technologies' next-generation vaccine carriers 
for safe delivery of COVID-19 vaccines. Envolio is a patented technology developed indigenously with the support from Bayrak and its partners Venture Center, Seacamp and Social Alpha. Envolio is now live in pilot capacity across four states of India and has been tested exhaustively in various geographies. We're proud to have been supported by Bayrak and it gives us immense pleasure to launch our latest variant at Global Bio India 2021. We have taken on a mission to minimize vaccine wastage and ensure efficacious vaccines reach the furthest corners of India and beyond. Thank you. The second product today is Grippy, which is from Bionic Hope Private Limited. This is an advanced prosthetic hand with a sense of touch and multi-grip control. It is a 3D printed, lightweight and affordable, battery powered prosthesis for people with below elbow amputation and aged 15 years and above. The video please. The next on the list is KR from the Janipri Innovations Private Limited. It is a portable and wireless intrapartum fetal heart rate, uterine contraction and maternal heart rate monitoring device, which also communicates with an intrapartum monitoring mobile application called Dutch for an intelligent alert and remote central monitoring. We'll have a short video, please. <laughs> Moving ahead, we now have a product called EasyNav from the Happy Reliable Surgeries Private Limited. It is a made in India computer guided surgical navigation system which gives real time and precise location of the surgical instruments on patient CT MRI which helps the surgeon to take informed decisions during surgery. A video please.
The fifth product today is Vodka from Vibira Process Technologies Limited. It is a device based on cavitation technology. This platform does in situ generation of strongly oxidizing radicals, which are used for oxidation of pollutants and depolymerization reactions. The platform offers significant intensification to wastewater treatment, valorization potential of complex waste biomass streams by pre treating biomass and offers unique retrofit opportunities and can be deployed at existing wastewater treatment plants and enhance their ability to handle more wastewater and improve the quality of treated water. A short video of the technology, please. Vodka is an advanced oxidation reactor that harnesses the power of vortex cavitation. Radicals can react with most of the pollutants present in the wastewater that results in the reduction of chemical oxygen demand. Vodka, a high performance vortex cavitation reactor for the process intensification. Launching our product, Vodka. Vivira Process Technologies is a startup from the National Chemical Laboratory, CSIR NCL, a prestigious research laboratory of India. Vivira is developing a novel technology to crack hard problems of wastewater treatment using vortex cavitation. Our technology enables companies to treat wastewater with minimal or no additional chemicals. It can process a lot of difficult to treat wastewater and can be synergistically combined with current technologies. So those were the five product launches and with your permission, Honorable Minister, sir, uh, we will now have, have a launch of an app. So with your go ahead, uh, we'll make that launch as well. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I'll just read out a bit of the technology about this app. So the Tech Ola is a marketplace designed by the Kalam Institute of Health Technology, KIHT as we know it, which is a health technology policy support institute established by the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India. There is no consolidated gateway for innovators and entrepreneurs to access industrial and scientific facilities. The innovators and startups, therefore, do not get optimum benefit of testing and prototyping services, which delays their work and also keeps them devoid of competitive pricing for such services. The Tech Ola is a single window e-marketplace app which would bring together all public and private sector laboratories, fabrication and prototyping centers to help innovators access services such as testing, machining, prototyping, fabricating, 3D printing, validation, material characterization, electrical and electronics, electrical and electronics and laser services and batch production. The centers and laboratories listed on Tech Ola would have necessary accreditations and competitive pricing allowing innovators to access them online. This would be a minimum government and maximum governance model to take health technology innovations towards an integrated ecosystem. We would now do the e-launch please. The slides please. While innovation ecosystem is thriving with new inventions, these inventions and innovations need large number of scientific laboratories accredited by the various quality systems to provide for validation, verification and accuracy measurement. Today, there is no common platform or marketplace allowing innovators to look out for the services of scientific nature that is being provided by laboratories across the country. There does not also exist a database of such laboratories and facilities. Techola is there for a marketplace where any innovator would know the laboratories and facilities that provide the scientific services, the cost at which the services are provided and the duration it takes to get the services of various scientific tests. Techola therefore is a market gateway converging innovators, scientific service providers, researchers and laboratories. It was an absolute honor to have made these announcements in the esteemed presence of our chief guest for today, Sri Piyush Goelji, the Honorable Minister. And I would now invite you, sir, for your address. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Madam. Secretary, Department of Biotechnology, Dr. Renu Sarup, Head SPED and the BIRAC uh, 
Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, Dr. Manish Divan, the Chief Operating Officer of ABEL, Dr. Suresh Narayan, Sri Amit Kapoor, all other dignitaries joining us on this uh, program, both from India and abroad, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I am truly impressed with the size and scale of growth that your work, Dr. Saroop, and your team have demonstrated in the last two years since I first had the privilege of interacting with those young startups at the AeroCity complex. I have very fond memories of that evening. I think uh, the vibrancy that was evident that evening, the excitement that I could see across that large pandal, the enthusiasm of our young boys and girls was quite infectious. And I must compliment you, Dr. Saroop, and your team for your leadership of this activity. It's not simple. It's a new field, uncharted territory, a lot of learnings, a lot of stumbling along the way. But uh, the results are truly phenomenal. As against a target of 2,000, you just informed us you've crossed 4,200 uh, startups in this sector. The $70 billion output contribution to the GDP slated to grow up to $100 billion, $150 billion by 2025, including $100 billion in manufacturing, truly gives you a phenomenal potential in the future. The five selected products that you have launched today are, are reflective of the contemporary thinking that you and your team are engaged in. I mean, each one of them is so relevant to us in today's times, be it the vaccine distribution at the last mile, be it the prosthetic hand. We have millions and millions of uh, our citizens who are suffering from uh, losing their limbs. We have organizations like the Jaipur Foot, of course, giving human service. But something like uh, what you have shown, the multi-grip 3D printed device, if it can be made to scale and made more affordable, it can actually be so precise as to not, not create an artificial limb, but almost a real limb. That's the level of precision that technology can bring into it. Both, uh, all the three other devices, whether it's the wastewater treatment and sewage uh, device, whether it's the device which helps medical monitoring of patients, or the device which gives location of surgical instruments. All of this are reflective of India's own Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign to become self-sufficient in modern technology, particularly in healthcare, and going forward, ensure that 1.35 billion Indians get a better quality of life, get better healthcare facilities. And as they say, when you combine bioeconomy with the digital and information economy, you get biotech. And I think that will truly be the defining moment for India's future economic growth, for India's engagement with the rest of the world, and demonstrate India's capabilities as a powerhouse of innovation, invention, and research. Biotechnology has potential to really push the boundaries of high-tech research, and new technologies. And I think the, the team that you have put together, I was just glancing through the report that has been released today, the Bioeconomy Report 2021. It shows that you have addressed several very critical issues, including issues relevant to our farmers, 
the agriculture sector which impacts the people of India the most. You have <coughs> looked at products like cotton, which impacts agriculture and textiles, the largest job creator in the country, the largest foreign exchange earner in the country. So I, I think this kind of contemporary thinking, coupled with the good work that we saw during the COVID pandemic, will help we nurture that spirit of inquisitiveness which is there in our children but which just needs to be harnessed, encouraged and given the necessary support. I think the need of the hour is to engage more and more with rural India also. A lot of talent lying there. The translations, the language capabilities that your department is trying to bring about to help people in different languages whose mother tongue may be different, who may not be well versed with English, but may have good ideas, will help us to really bring together the best that India has to offer. Of course, all innovation has to be affordable. All innovation has to be accessible to the larger masses and should have a significant impact on society, on our lives, make the life of people easier, what Prime Minister Modi often refers to as ease of living. But uh, from what I see, the focus of your team and you personally, Dr. Saroop, I'm very impressed with uh, your efforts with the work that you're doing, and I pledge the industry ministries and commerce departments complete support in whatever way we can, either to support our startups or to promote our technologies internationally. We can work with the MEA to get these technologies more visibility at international fora. We can even look at special uh, fairs to showcase uh, the outcomes or the outputs of your of the startup ecosystem to other parts of the world. But clearly, you have helped position India as a global biomanufacturing hub through your relentless efforts in the last few years. So my compliments to your department, to your ministry. And it's very appropriate that when we say that 40% of all the startups are led by women, that a woman of substance, of eminence, like Dr. Renu Saroop, is leading this effort, showing the world the strength of our mothers and sisters. Truly proud of you and your team, Renuji. Keep up that spirit. I've always found that in you. You also bring with you a lot of empathy and a lot of involvement with our young startups. That's the impression I got two years ago when I came for your program. And I think that's very important because ultimately our startups need to be encouraged to experiment, to go beyond the run-of-the-mill thinking. We need to ensure that our startups are not afraid of failure. In fact, I for one believe the country should celebrate failure. Because it's only when somebody fails, I read somewhere, he knows how not to do the same thing. So in some sense, uh, failure also has its own importance, particularly in research and innovation and invention. And therefore, the advancements that your sector is making, the biotech sector, making the impossible achievable, helping us to be recognized all over the world, helping get investments into the sector, ensuring that, as you just now uh, told us, technology propellers, which will serve and impact uh, these startups, will be set up and manufacturing zones, M zones, which will provide a headway or, or, or help these startups which you're incubating to get the initial fillip to implement their ideas on the ground and possibly test them 
and help make them more commercially viable. I think these are brilliant ideas. I'm delighted that Invest India and DPIIT have also been actively involved with you. Thank you for starting the PDC, the project development cell. I'm sure that will help us to come up with significant targeted support for your sector for any good ideas that they may come up with. And it is this synergy between the private sector and the government which will truly be an enabler for the startup ecosystem in India. You, you really cannot have great innovation and invention coming up only through government initiative. We do need to have all sections of uh, business involved, but at the same time, government should act as an enabler, as a service provider, as a support to the ecosystem. And for that, your dashboard and tracker approach, I'm sure will help the startups going forward. Uh, reports like the one we have released today will keep getting regular updates on progress made for the people of India. And I do hope this knowledge sharing that you are doing will encourage more and more young boys and girls to become entrepreneurs, to become innovators, to involve all the stakeholders on one platform, to get states also actively engaged. All of these ideas will help us transform India to a true Atma Nirbhar Bharat based on indigenous technology. I salute all the young startups for their ingenuity, for their forward-looking thinking, for the good ideas that were demonstrated to us today also. I'm sure the professional approach that this entire initiative has demonstrated over the years will add the sixth dimension to the work of particularly our healthcare sector or the doctors. I believe the doctors have five existing dimensions for decision making, such as symptoms, events, history, habits, and reports. To my mind, biotechnology will put together all these dimensions and create the layer of the sixth dimension and help different sectors in different fields, more particularly healthcare, to truly become the instrument of service to meet the needs of 1.35 billion Indians. My best wishes to you, ma'am, your entire team, and to all the people who have joined us, all the young startups who are actively involved in this Global Bio India 2021 conclave, I wish you and your team all success and do hope to see more and more growth and progress, newer versions in the years ahead, newer technologies which will serve this country and ensure that whatever be the challenges that come before the country, we are there to face those challenges, to convert those challenges into new opportunities. And our young boys and girls, our startups, our young professionals, our innovators, thinkers, our scientists will be at the cutting edge of technology worldwide, will be at the forefront of India's development and will ensure a better future for our children. God bless you and your efforts. All the very best. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much for your encouragement. And on behalf of the entire biotech community, I reassure you that we will take this journey forward and continue to look forward to your cooperation, sir. Especially those two very important points that you mentioned. One is showcasing them internationally. We need a lot of your support, sir, to set up these international fairs and be able to showcase them. And also through the PDC to reaching out to the states. So thank you very much, sir, for your presence. Afsa, over to you to conclude this inaugural session. Well, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, and honorable minister, sir, your presence and acknowledgement truly means a lot to us. I'm sure that 
this session would actually give a lot of impetus to all our efforts. And thank you so much, all the members on the panel, to join us this uh, afternoon evening. May I please uh, take your permission to formally close this session, and we'll move into the second segment of the startup conclave onto a different link. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank Namaskar, you. Thank you.